Edwin Boring was born on October 23, 1886, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he grew up in a Quaker household. Edwin Boring was an experimental psychologist and one of the most influential leaders of the discipline in America. He was known as Mr. Psychology, and later he became one of the first historians of psychology. He studied electrical engineering at Cornell University and also received his master's degree from there in 1908. For one of his elective courses, he chose Edward Titchener's psychology course and he found his lectures magical. Since then, he was motivated by his class. He worked a year at a factory named Bethlehem Steel. He taught science in Moravian Church School for one year. Then he returned to Cornell University in 1910 for a master's degree to augment his teaching credentials. Soon, he became a member of Titchener's lab group. His wife, Lucy Day, was also a member of the lab after him. He received his PhD in 1914 and spent four years as an instructor at Cornell University. In 1919, G. Stanley Hall offered Boring a professor of experimental psychology position at Clark University. He joined Harvard University as an associate professor in 1922, and by 1928, he was a professor. He stayed in Harvard until he was retired in 1957. He chose Harvard because he believed that they had a greater need for him there. He had a mission to rescue Harvard psychology from the philosophers and to transform psychology into a respectable science. Boring had many accomplishments. He became the president of the American Psychological Association in 1928. He also served as the director of the Psychological Laboratory from 1924 to 1949, and he became the chair of the psychology department. In 1945, under his direction, the divisions of experimental and physiological psychology were separated from social and political psychology. Also, he was named Edgar Pierce Professor of Psychology in 1956. On top of that, Boring was one of the first to present a psychology course on public television as the 1957 Howard Lowell Television Lecturer. In 1959, the American Psychological Foundation awarded him a gold medal for his achievements as an experimentalist, teacher, critic, theorist, administrator, popularizer, and an editor. Boring was not drafted during the First World War because of the birth of his first son. Therefore, Robert M. Yerkes asked him to join into the development intelligence testing, and Boring accepted this offer. Boring was later appointed chief psychological examiner at Champ Upton in Long Island. Then in 1918, Boring was asked to work on a massive report of the Army Intelligence Program. Boring made his contribution during the war, but he was troubled afterward by the lack of scientific objectivity that resulted from the intelligence testing. He found the use of probabilities to answer scientific questions to be particularly frustrating. At the time, Boring felt that science was a field of certainty, not probability. As a result, Boring remained cautious of intelligence testing th throughout his life. When questions followed in later years about the definition of intelligence, Boring adopted this phrase. Intelligence is what the tests test. Boring viewed psychology as a science and he was strongly positive about this opinion. Him seeing psychology as a science made a large impact on Harvard psychology department. He believed that experimental psychology was the scientific way of probing the relationship between the environment and the human behavior. Boring started shaping psychology when Harvard gave a complete independence to the psychology department from the philosophy department in 1937. His contribution was a great foundation for others. He was focused on the physical aspects of human behavior, studying sensory and perceptual systems. Since he was originally an electrical engineer, he was strictly scientific in his approach which allowed psychology to be separated from philosophy. As an experimental researcher, Boring conducted innovative studies of visual perception. S.S. Stevens and other of Boring's students collaborated on his studies of sensation and perception, and he also published an influential work on the moon illusion. 
which shows the fact that moon looks larger on the horizon than at its zenith. Boring show that this illusion depends on the position of the eyes in the skull. One of Boring's best known projects is his 1940 study of the moon illusion. Boring and a fellow researcher, A. H. Holway, hypothesized that the moon appears larger on the horizon because the eyes view it directly at a level position, while the moon overhead appears smaller because the eyes must look up. They tested this experimentally and found that for an observer whose eyes were kept in a fixed position while a circle representing the moon moved up through the use of a pulley system, the moon actually appeared increased in size. This illusion didn't occur when participants were laying down while weaving the moon, and they also found some evidence of it not occurring when viewing the moon with only one eye. These results led the researchers to conclude that the illusion of the moon shrinkage depends on the movement of the eyes in the head, not the movement of the actual head, and that it depends on the binocular vision, that is, the use of both eyes together. This study exemplifies Boring's interest in misperceptions of sensory experience. Later in his career, Boring became interested in the perceptual ambiguity of figure ground phenomena. He discussed cartoonist W. E. Hill's My Wife and My Mother-in-Law in a 1930 journal article, explaining that this illustration was an accurate representation of the phenomena because the two different images are interpenetrating one another with no formal dividing line. He contrasted this image to Edgar Rubin's Rubin vase figure, where he felt that there's, no, there's an obvious dividing line between the human profiles and the goblets. This description made Hill's young woman, old woman puzzle famous and earned it the title of the boring figure. Edwin Boring had many publications. One of them was a book that was called A History of Experimental Psychology. He published it in 1929 with hopes of making psychologists more history conscious. Most people considered this to be Boring's most important work. Another book he published in 1933 was named The Physical Dimensions of Consciousness. He attempts and accommodates with behaviorism by viewing sensations through their physical mechanisms. This work actually bridged structuralism and behaviorism using monistic physicalism. One of the purposes of this book was to also to try to clarify consciousness and sensation. He also had many other books like Psychology, a factual textbook that was published in 1935, Sensation and Perceptions in the History of Experimental Psychology in 1942, Psychology for the Fighting Man in 1943. Psychology 1, 1956. Psychologists at Large Autobiography in 1961. Contemporary Psychology and many others. But one of the most important books he had was called The Woman Problem that he published in 1951. He wrote about the disadvantages women in psychology face as a result of the society which affects their professional advancement. He called this the woman problem. Boring describes the standard procedure men undergo to achieve prestige in their career. A man must receive a PhD, conduct meaningful research that gets published, and undertake administrative work. If work is done well enough to impress their boss, Men are likely to be prompted to higher positions and work in broader tasks such as publishing books or becoming a dean or college president, allowing them to influence a wider range of people. It was the pursuit of prestige at higher positions that women lacked, largely because they were blocked from the higher level jobs in the first place. Edwin Boring passed away in July 1, 1968. His theoretical papers inspired research by other experimental psychologists and many other researchers. He was best known as the notable historian of psychology through his History of Experimental Psychology book that was published in 1929. It shaped the way in which psychologists view their emergence as a science and it helped them to define the scope and the goals of experimental psychology.
Boring attempted to unify an ever-diversifying field, solidifying its scientific status and presenting a picture that was comprehensible and of interest to all people. For the study of human nature is surely of interest to all. And now he is listed as one of the hundred most eminent psychologists in the 20th century on American Psychological Association's list. <laughs>